Dwayne The Rock Johnson is building a beverage empire that could be the envy of not only his Hollywood cohorts, but beverage industry veterans alike. Another celebrity trying to productize his or her personal brand, right? I mean, we've seen this time and time again. And old school CPG industry pundits are always quick to hate on these celebrity owned brands. They, for whatever reason, believe that these celebrities will not have enough of time in their schedule, won't want to leverage their personal brand enough, or God forbid, they don't know the industry at all. Like they're going to be going through sales reports and financial data all by themselves without any team, right? To be honest, these A-list celebrities have a whole team that's around them now. And it's not just kind of like their buddies. These are people that are capable and help them throughout every aspect of their life and their schedule. Also, today's consumers really expect the celebrities to productize themselves. The shift towards everybody believing they are their own brand and a lot of the product brands that are bought are really just kind of like accessories of our own personal brand, especially some of the younger consumers really kind of thinking about themselves as a business and a brand. No longer is a celebrity owned or like a celebrity run brand thought of in a bad light. We don't really think about a celebrity diluting their brand by having products or productizing themselves. And these A-list celebrities, like I mentioned before, their team is not made up of just like friends or people from their family that's on the payroll. Sometimes they have, and sometimes that's still the case. But a lot of times these A-list celebrities are really like putting the best of the best around them. They're looking for people that could help them with all of these businesses. They're no longer just trying to run these things themselves and trying to stretch themselves thin. They're partnering with the best of the best and they have access to the best of the best because people would like to have them attached to brands that they're building, investments. These A-list celebrities are getting access to the best of the best right now. It's kind of the perfect time for them to start anything. And if these celebrities are engaged with the brand or business they're building and it's authentic and kind of very well aligned to their brand, it could be magical. It could really be something that's special. And with the amount of noise that's in the consumer market right now, they can honestly be the signal to kind of cut through a lot of that noise. And even in the most competitive consumer categories, these things have been working out very well. And Dwayne The Rock Johnson could arguably be one of the best in terms of really lending his celebrity status to produce revenue, be that with movies, be that with other TV show projects and a number of other things that he has his hands in also in consumer packaged goods. I think he's in the top three of Instagram most followed users. He's also been named the most likable person in the world and probably a number of other kind of awards in terms of just how good of a person he is. He seems to constantly have a really good outward image that consumers love. And he's been able to like put out a very strong business savvy personal brand through his social media and not only just like talking the talk, but also walking the walk. So he's not just kind of faking it till he's making it. He is doing a ton of like really strong things in terms of like productizing his name. And you can see the results specifically in the CPG industry. And what I'm gonna be talking about here is just kind of giving you a sense of like how big his beverage empire is growing and arguably will continue to grow if he has more aspirations in the category. The first kind of investment that The Rock has made into the beverage category of CPG has been with Voss Water. That was in July of 2019. He made, I think, a minority investment or acquired a minority investment for him lending his name and him kind of promoting the Voss 
premium water brand. He also is a strategic advisor and has been kind of integral into building out some new products for Voss Water, also some new kind of formats, also some new international markets. And you saw that in January of 2020 when Voss put out their plus premium water that had some kind of electrolytes through an ingredient called Aquaman. And if you kind of are thinking I've heard that Aquaman name before, it might be because you listened to my Laird Superfood piece of content. If you have not watched that yet, I will pop that one up for you guys. They use that ingredient in their namesake products. It's been something that hasn't been used a ton yet in functional CPG, but with hydration products, just electrolytes in general kind of being in now and, and people really kind of paying attention to how hydrated they are, Probably something that you're gonna see a lot more, but it's usually used in more like a premium product. But overall, the rock has helped increase the exposure for Voss Water, also has been in a ton of kind of marketing, be that through some traditional marketing ads, TV ads, but also through some digital campaigns, helping them with their philanthropy, through some different like social purpose campaigns as well. And they've given a lot of product away to frontline workers during this COVID-19 pandemic. And I wasn't able to kind of get anything for Voss Water revenue, at least in terms of some of the recent, some recent data. But just to kind of give you guys a sense of maybe how the categories that Voss Water is in, how that is going, you have shelf stable water that has grown about 8% year over year, and that's about a $14 billion category. And then when you think about enhanced waters that outpace just the typical shelf stable waters at 12% year over year, and that amounts to somewhere around a $2.2 billion market. That was the rock kind of dipping his toes into the beverage industry, but his next big venture was getting himself away from non-alcoholic beverage and into alcoholic beverages with this Terramana tequila. And if you think about just water being essential to life, for whatever reason, The Rock has been able to make his Terramana tequila be also kind of essential to life. And I'll break this kind of down to you because he has broken almost every record, I guess you could say. In the first year alone, they've sold I think 400,000 cases of tequila. And according to a few reports that I read, this is the biggest launch in the history of the spirits business. And this is like any spirits overall. And it's been a good year to launch an alcohol brand because of like the COVID-19 effect. You have a lot of really positive things that happen to the alcohol industry for some of these spirit brands because bars and restaurants were closed. A lot of that alcohol consumption moved to at home. And because of that, also people just spending a ton of time at home and consuming a ton of like digital content. The Rock did a really good job of just putting a ton of content out there, making sure that he was constantly pulsing and putting his personal brand towards the Terramana tequila brand. And all that kind of just created a snowball effect that really produced huge results for The Rock's tequila brand. And just to put this kind of into context for you guys, and a recent exit that happened also in the tequila category was George Clooney sold his Casa Amigos tequila brand when they was only doing 175,000 cases per year to Diageo for reportedly $1 billion. So if we take that same valuation and move it into the Rocks tequila brand, that would be somewhere around a two and a half billion dollar brand that the Rock has been able to build in less than a year. Now The Rock is also expanding that distillery in Mexico and they have like really grand plans for the Terramana tequila brand. They only are operating like I think in North America right now and they believe this is a global brand. They believe this is something that they're gonna be able to sell in Europe, in Asia and why not? The Rock's brand is a global brand. He's one of the most popular celebrities in the world. So why not be able to expand in all these different countries and regions? And the Terramana Tequila leadership that helps The Rock with this business has said that they believe this is a 1 million case a year business. 
which at this point, only six other tequila brands in the world reach that number. So that would be a huge achievement. And it sounds like Terramana Tequila and The Rock don't really plan on maybe selling it yet. I think they're gonna hang on. Maybe they build some type of portfolio of several different brands. Be interesting because most of these celebrity owned alcoholic brands, be that from Ryan Reynolds or like George Clooney, and I'm sure there's other historical ones I could pull from that I'm just not remembering off the top of my head, but they tend to sell pretty quickly and sell it to a large alcoholic beverage CPG portfolio. But you never know, The Rock might wanna continue on and see how far he can grow this thing by himself. And then finally, in kind of the newest announced beverage that The Rock is being a part of, and this is Zoa Energy. This will launch in March of 2021. And Zoa Energy is really kind of a part of this clean energy subcategory that's growing immensely. The leaders right now in that category are Celsius Holdings, and then also AB InBev owned Highball Energy. The Zoa Energy product, at least what has been announced, they said they're gonna be leaning into immunity, boosting ingredients. They're gonna have a bunch of vitamins, be that B vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin D. You're gonna have amino acids, electrolytes, and also green tea slash green coffee in terms of the caffeine source. There's gonna be no preservatives, no artificial ingredients by any stretch of the imagination. And they said that this has been in development for over 18 months. So I have high hopes that in 18 months they were able to crack the code on this flavoring, the flavor system, a part of Zoa Energy, because just on paper, I have a little bit of hesitation in terms of how this is going to taste. So hopefully over 18 months, they've been able to just get over the hump and make this product great, not great for a clean energy product. If they really want to be a disruptor in the category, they're gonna to need to be great comparable to the general energy drink incumbents, not the other clean energy emerging brands that are trying to build out this new subcategory. In terms of the sales strategy for Zoa Energy, they are gonna be launching this on their own website and also on Amazon. And then in terms of the physical retail, the exclusive distributor is gonna be Molson Coors. And they're also going to leverage Molson Coors expertise in marketing support. I also believe LA Libations is involved with this as well. So they're gonna have a ton of help and a ton of capable people that are going to be able to provide value to the Zoa Energy product. And as I mentioned, this is going to be positioned as a clean energy product. Also, because it has extra functional ingredients, you can use this in terms of just enhancing performance, you know, akin to other kind of active nutrition, ready to drink beverages. The letters within Zoa Energy is supposed to represent A to Z kind of inclusive consumer base, everyday warriors. It doesn't matter what you are in terms of race or gender or what type of work you do, what your educational background, your socioeconomic status, any of those things. This is for everybody in terms of how they're positioning this product. So what's next for Zoa Energy? The team, leadership team at Zoa Energy has mentioned that this is just the first product in terms of the brand, there are gonna be a ton of other kind of health focused products that will hit the market. This kind of aligns with what I was talking about in my 2021 predictions for the sports nutrition industry, where I talked about The Rock was going to put his name, be it through partnership or through one of his own brands on a line of kind of supplements. If you guys haven't watched that video, pop that one up for you guys here. This was just a hunch that I had. I thought that the Zoa Energy product, or at least the energy product that they have been mentioning for the last year, I thought, hey, this is just gonna be the first of many kind of supplements. And what I'm talking about supplements more as supplements as food, more the active nutrition, food form, beverage form of these, not necessarily like caps, powders, pills, even though they might have some powdered extensions that might work well for the Zoa Energy brand. Just some final thoughts here. I'm not necessarily going to like put my neck on the line and say the Rock's new energy beverage, Zoa Energy, is going to become this like true disruptor that they constantly are mentioning 
mentioning in their press releases and just some of their early kind of communication strategy. But I do believe The Rock has proven that his distribution muscle, his ability to get his message out for beverage products has done very well so far. So I wouldn't be surprised if this product does do extremely well. The US tequila market and the energy drink market are of similar sizes. They are of kind of similar competitiveness, but the energy drink market is a little bit more consolidated at the top in terms of the top three leaders. But a lot of that comes down to distribution systems. And if you have master national distribution and Zoe Energy has that right off the bat with Molson Coors. So then it circles back to those comments I had before and really around if this product is going to be successful, it's going to need to taste good. Regardless if this is a clean energy product, any type of functional beverage, doesn't matter. Beverages overall are still taste forward, even if this is a functional beverage. So this product is going to need to taste great. Needs to match up to the incumbent, especially with The Rock's personal brand and the way that he's going to distribute out this brand. You're gonna have a lot of like mainstream consumers, a lot of people that were drinking Monsters, Red Bulls, Rockstars, Bangs, that are gonna try this product. And if they're gonna go in and think this is gonna taste like a artificially sweetened, artificially flavored beverage, they're gonna come away disappointed unless they've come up over those 18 months with a way to make this all natural, functional energy beverage taste amazing. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you wanna help support me, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button on this video. If this is the first time you've been introduced to my videos, would love for you guys to be a part of my community by subscribing to my channel. I upload several videos just like this weekly. And if you guys wanna connect further outside of this platform, I do include all of my social media links down below. I just wanna thank you guys again for your time. Hopefully I gave you some value in return and we'll see you guys on the next video.